This is Twit. This is called the build plane or the build plate. I, I, it, it helps to think of this because we're, we're doing this specifically for a 3D printer. But this doesn't have to be for a 3D printer. This can be for any application that requires a 3D object. But if you imagine this being the build plate of your 3D printer, then it also means you can resize it. So however big your 3D printer is, every one of these grid spaces, that's 10, 10 millimeters. So if your build plate is only uh, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, you know you need to build within five by five square, right? But what we want to do is to look at some of the basic functions. Now, don't do this. Don't do this, this sort of uh, design using the trackpad on your laptop because it is a horrible experience to do that. You're going to want an external mouse. Specifically, you're going to want an external mouse with a scroll pad because what a scroll pad will allow you to do is allow you to zoom in, zoom in and out. So if I scroll back, I'll zoom out. If I scroll in, I zoom in. Scroll wheel? The scroll wheel, correct. Yeah. So the scroll wheel is actually, it's super useful when you're doing 3D design because it lets you zoom in and out at a moment's notice. Now, the, the F button is actually also very important. So if, um, if I've got multiple objects, you'll find that I am focused on the center of my, uh, of my plane right now. And if I want to focus in on this one, the problem is I'll, I'll keep kind of passing it. See how it's not really... It, it's, it's the focus is here, not on this object I want to play with. What I can do is if you select an object and then hit the key F, it changes focus to that object. And now the entire plane revolves around that one particular object. So that's actually, you can go and try that. So okay. put, put an object like off to the corner of your build plate. Up here. There you go. Okay. Now, right, hold down the right button and move the mouse, and you'll start uh, scrolling around. Mm. There you go. Okay. Now, notice how if you want to take a look at that, uh, if you zoom in to try to take a look at that cylinder, uh, it's going to zoom in the wrong place. So now that it's selected, hit the key F. There Whoa. you go. So now you're focused on that object. Now go ahead and scroll around. Uh, no, so uh, hold the right mouse button and move the mouse. Okay. There you go. See, now you can check all, all aspects of that 3D wow. object. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Now, uh, go, Jason, F. what do you got? Well, I've, uh, I think I may have uh, some issues getting my screen onto uh, into the TriCaster. But, ah, okay. Well, uh, right. Yes, I was trying to follow along while we were troubleshooting that, and uh, so far, so good. Okay, so far, so good. Th those are just the basic ways to use it. If you come back to my computer, uh, the, the, what we're going to be doing is filling our little build plane here with objects in just a bit. Uh, but I wanted to give you a little bit of basic instruction about... The, uh, the overall use of the, uh, of the software before we, we jump in. Now, let's do instruction one. This is placing and resizing objects. This is the most basic thing that you can do in Tinkercad, and that is to use these objects on the side here. These are your basic shapes, and it allows you to just drop basic shapes onto the build plane and then modify them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take four objects any four. So I'm going to take a box, a cylinder, a pyramid, and this round roof thingy. And what I want is I want all of them about 40 millimeters away from each other. Now, there's a couple of different ways I can do that. Remember, I told you that each one of these marks, these large lines, that's 10 millimeters. I can take this and I can, if I, if I left click on the object and hold it, I can actually move the object around. Or what I can also do is I can click it, select it, and then I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move them one millimeter at a time, yeah. or actually one unit at a time. And down here at the bottom of the, uh, the lower uh, right-hand corner of the screen, I've actually got what's called the snap grid, and I can choose what each of those units is. So every time I hit the arrow key, is it 0.1 millimeters? Is it 0.25 millimeters? Is it one millimeter? Is it five millimeters? I, and I typically start with one millimeter. That's that's a good uh, unit of measurement. So go ahead and place those, and then just make sure that they're about 40 millimeters apart from each other. You don't want them too close. And every box is 10, right? That's correct. And uh, so, Jason, you, can we uh, can we see your screen? I think we can see now. See what, what you got. I think we can. I think uh, we can. There we go. So, okay, and I'm and I'm measuring more or less from, like, the very top of the object down. So 10, 20, yeah, 30, 40 Yeah, there you go. So you got something it. Something like that with the outer edge like that. Yeah. So that these outer edges match. Is that kind of what I'm doing? Yeah. Well, I mean, just 40, okay. as long as they're 40 millimeters mm -hmm. apart from mm -hmm. each other, you're all good. Okay. Something right. like that-ish. Yeah. Megan, you okay? I think so. 
What do you got? What kind of shapes are you choosing? I'm choosing a heart and a cylinder <laughs> and an icosahedron. <laughs> Ico Obvious. <laughs> Obviously. Ico, Ico, I see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And a diamond. And a diamond. Oh, nice, nice. Um, now, yeah. how do I know if they're 40? Is it about or is it approximately millimeter or you want them exactly? No, approximately. But okay. uh, the way you would know if you come back to my screen is remember, if you look at this, every one of these grid lines. So, so from here to here, that's 10 millimeters. Here to here is 10 millimeters. Here to here is 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a pretty good visual of, of how far apart. So now there, here's, here's another quick hit. You can use the arrow keys to move objects one unit at a time. However, if you hold, if you hold the shift key and then move an arrow, what will happen is it will move it 10 units at a time. Oh, uh, um, I, forward. Oh, so, and which is basically a box. Right. Essentially. And that's actually a very useful tip because what I will do sometimes is I want to move an object out of uh, the build frame mm -hmm. because I, I want to work on something else that's there, but I want to be able to put it back easily. So I'll just remember shift like one, two, three, three four, five. Away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then three when back. I come back, just three back. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, sense. it's one of these things of you kind of need to have a standard of measurement in your head. Sure so that um, you know how far away you've moved it. Otherwise, every time you move an object, you kind of have to redesign your, your build.